you guys, you guys can all hear me okay? I don't know if you see, those shoes are amazing. They're great. I'm Mark Wunsch. I, I'm from Guild. My Twitter is at Mark Wunsch, so send me a toot. Um, <laughs> the geologic time scale. So the geologic time scale is this system of measurement that relates strict stratigraphy, which is like the study of rock layers, to time. Uh, yeah. Disclaimer, I am not a geologist. I am not an earth scientist of any kind. I've learned everything about this particular subject uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, so I'm now somewhat of an expert. Uh, this is a metaphor that I'll be using, and that metaphor will be stretched to its limits. Um, but like anybody who writes JavaScript professionally, I am not without a lot of hubris, so let's be <laughs> Uh, I really love this concept of deep time. So the Earth is over four and a half billion years old. That expanse of time is so impressive and impossible to comprehend. And modern web development is about, what, 10 years old, maybe? Um, but we suffer, I think, as an industry of real short-sightedness. And so this is the second Backbone Conference um, and I'm very excited to be here and, and honored to be here. Um, but really, we're just discussing this really small sliver of technology, just like this one tiny layer in, in a tiny moment in time. Um, and at this conference, you're going to hear a lot about uh, implementations, and you've heard a lot about uh, certain processes and patterns to follow, and you'll hear more about that tomorrow. But what I would like to do now is uh, invite us all to take a, a big step back and take a really top-down view of web technologies and what, what brought us to this place today. Uh, I work at Gilt. Uh, Gilt, if you don't know, is an e-commerce company. We, we sell shoes and stuff. We do flash sales. Uh, so what that means, starting at noon Eastern time usually, we sell a limited amount of inventory for luxury goods, fashion, uh, at a steep discount for a, a small period of time. And I'm going to use Gilt as a case study, uh, because I, I work there. But in my time there, we've also tried a lot of different approaches to building web <coughs> applications. So we have our website, which is, you know, I guess a traditional e-commerce experience or a traditional e-commerce technology stack. Uh, we have some experiments. This is uh, Gilt Live, which is live.gilt.com, which uses real-time uh, web sockets to update what people are buying, so you can see what people are buying right at that minute, right at that second, I should say. And finally, our mobile <coughs> web application, which is like a single page app. And, and all of these use backbones and backbone, that singular, in various capacities. Um, so guilt is at scale, and what you would say is at organizational scale. So there's about 60 engineers contributing to, to this experience. Um, and what I hope to answer today is what influenced us at Gilt to turn to specific technologies, one of them being backbone. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about stratigraphy, so studying the layers of the Gilt tech stack. Um, I'm going to talk about this technology, it's called asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It, it, maybe you guys have heard of that one. So uh, we'll then talk about that in the context of a particularly tough problem, which is the problem of pagination. I'm going to talk about robots and code that we write for robots. Uh, I'm going to talk about templates and how we use templates to keep the balance between robots and humans in check. Um, I'll discuss a very serious and important architecture, a uh, very serious business called models, views, and whatever. And finally, I'll close by attempting to predict the future. As I said before, hubris. Uh, stratigraphy. So I'm going to start by talking about the strata of our web application. And in a business like Gilt, these layers of technology form sort of one on top of the other. And by examining a cross-section of that system, we can infer a lot about the past several years of modern web development. What's interesting about stratigraphy is that it's bounded by a set of laws or principles. So the first one is the principle of superposition, 
Uh, and this one is simple. What's at the bottom is older than the things that are at the top. It's pretty simple. Um, and you, you can see what's at the bottom of your web application. You just do a git log reverse. And in this case, it actually doesn't help very much. Import from subversion. <laughs> so, so I guess this is like pre-Cambrian era or something. Um, this is in 2008, but I guess that's old enough to call legacy now. The principle of original horizontality this states that layers will tend to deposit horizontally. So Gilt, like many businesses, started as a Ruby on Rails application. Yeah. And with Rails uh, back then, you got uh, this thing called Prototype. I want to take some time to give lots of respect to prototype.js. Yeah. In many ways, so ahead of its time. And it, it's so impressive. And it doesn't get the love it deserves. <coughs> And it, doesn't, it didn't get the love it deserved back then, because uh, like most people, jQuery was becoming preferable. And so we went through this painful process, and I don't know how many of you went through this process of replacing prototype with jQuery. I see a hand back there, yeah. It was uh, painful. And what we've created here is what they call in geology an unconformity. So the layers are no longer continuous. Which brings us to the principle of lateral continuity. The technology layers continue to build up, and we continue to modify and chip away at certain areas and update others. And you, you get to something like that. <laughs> uh, so this was our system about two, two and a half years ago. And you can see that things are no longer deposited horizontally. So the principle of lateral continuity states that at some point these layers were continuous, but something <coughs> happened, some technical erosion. So the deposit of this technical sediment continues until we reach where we are today. And you can see there's backbone in there. And I don't know, there's some coffee scripts in there, sure. Uh, I don't know what NPM is doing there, but OK. Um, and if you cut the top layer, if you're standing on the top soil, uh, it looks like a modern web stack in Scala. It's quite <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> as you observe cross sections from different angles, you see a peak at something older, more hidden, something that's been buried. So in order to get a truly comprehensive understanding of the full front end guilt technology stack, this is just the front end, by the way, uh, you need to hold all of this in your head. And that's daunting. So you might call this technical debt. That's a nice term for it. Uh, but part of scaling a business and a technical organization is confronting the legacy of these layers hidden beneath the surface. So I want you to keep this layer cake in mind as I continue. And as we talk about scope and applications growing, often what we mean is we're adding layers to the system. And sometimes we induce technical erosion. So think about maintainability. It's a key word, maintainability. Now, here's a good question. Why do we need all of these technologies? Why, why didn't one work for us? What is so hard about the web that we introduce layer after layer of technology and complexity? It's Ajax. So Ajax is the fundamental piece of the modern web experience. Where would we be without asynchronous communication between the client and the server? Probably not here at this conference. But for something that's so core and so basic, we've really only recently begun to grasp the best way to do Ajax communication. I think that Ajax has a lot to do with the strata we saw earlier. And each one of those technology layers has an opinion about how to manage this client-server communication. So I made a point earlier to draw your attention to the original usage of the term Ajax. So it used to be that you used Ajax to do these naive uh, remote procedure calls with XML. Anybody remember those days? Show of hands. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't great, but it worked. <laughs> Uh, there were HTTP calls that look and still look kind of like this. So get 
and we have a, a URL called add to cart, get add to cart. This is not idempotent. Um, this is not restful. It's not ideal, but it works and worked. Does anybody remember RJS? Yeah, this was kind of crazy. So you make an AJAX request and you get back a dynamically generated JavaScript snippet and you still see this a bunch if it's not RJS. It's not great, but it, it worked. Uh, here's something you still see from time to time, uh, and we still see it guilt. All of these examples are not, like they, we think of these things as ancient history, but they're recent. So the server tells you this was successful, but the con <laughs> content of the response tells you it wasn't. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it works. And so all of this comes back to maintainability. And I'm going to touch on this point a few more times. All of these AJAX approaches, though maybe unappealing, are still AJAX. What makes us uneasy about those approaches is that we say they are unmaintainable. We question their maintainability. Um, and dealing with a large system means that you come across previous approaches where maintaining it feels <coughs> like a burden. And that's why you keep adding new layers. So <coughs> let's continue. So we did it, we, we're successful. We got a restful API that brings back a JSON response. And now wh what do we do with that? So it used to be, you know, when it was Ajax with an X, with XML, uh, you, would, uh, you would just take that markup and append it to the DOM. It worked, okay. Um, now we have these client-side templating languages. So when we're using JSON, you could either concatenate a bunch of strings together or you apply that JSON object to a template. Um, and I just wanna point out which is more complex. So on one hand, you take a bunch of DOM markup you get from the server and do inner HTML or something like that. On the other, you do some non-trivial <laughs> parsing of a templating file in a templating language, and then apply a JSON document to that, and then apply that to the DOM. And I, I like client-side templating, I think it's awesome, right? There's no, no argument there, but it's just we've introduced complexity, and it, if we wanna pick a templating language, that's a new layer we have to think about. Um, so, I just want to pose that question rhetorically, is that a win? And every piece of